Hey everybody, so this is my second video since coming back. And in my last video, I kind of talked about intermittent fasting and how it had taken a negative turn for me there for a little bit. So I wanted to go over that for today and I'm still gonna do it all in one take. And I've got my phone to kind of keep track. I've already tried doing this without that and it doesn't really work very well for me. So I wanted to briefly start out with what is intermittent fasting. If you're watching this video, you probably know, but it can mean a lot of things. Uh, the most common, I think, and what, like the most common for what I do at least, is a 16 hour fast. So that would be, for me, I usually only eat lunch and dinner. And you could just, eat breakfast and lunch though. And then the other is a day fast, which a lot of people think, oh, that sounds horrible. You, you have to skip breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's not true. You would just go and eat dinner and then not eat until dinner the next day. And that would be a day. And so you might do that like twice a week. Um, some people, so <clears throat> I kind of want to just talk about like how I got into fasting. So I learned of intermittent fasting and it just became an excuse for me to do what I've always wanted to do, which is skip breakfast. I've never enjoyed eating breakfast. I'm never hungry when I wake up. It hurts my stomach to eat food right off the bat and it makes me just feel not good. I've, I've always disliked it. But I do get hungry naturally around like 10. So if I'm waking up at seven or eight, I'll get naturally hungry around 10 to 11. And if I drink coffee, then that time will go from anywhere from like noon to two o'clock. And so for the past few years, that's what I've been doing. I've just, I just naturally fast and I eat when I'm hungry and it, it is no problem. I really enjoy it. And I feel like I get more out of my other couple of meals. And if I'm not feeling like I, if I'm not hungry until dinner, I just won't eat until dinner. That really only happens maybe once a week though. But there's numer numerous scientific benefits of, of intermittent fasting. I really don't wanna get into that type of stuff on this channel. I think that there's like actual doctors on here that can talk about those things. I more just want this to be kind of a, a case study of, of how it works for me. And so I really wanna talk about three dangers or like three maybe this fasting thing is taking a negative turn for you as it did for me and so first though I want to talk about when shouldn't you fast I think that if you are someone who has no interest like breakfast lunch and dinner you love it if you don't then you feel sick which I've met lots of people that if they don't have breakfast they feel nauseous all day I would say that it's just not for you. Um, if it's gonna put you in such a bad state, then I don't know that the benefits are gonna outweigh the, uh, the benefits. And so, uh, talking about the negatives for me though, and how I kind of went to a, a dark place with this, um, it's kind of told in a story. So for one, I was filming YouTube for at the time and I had this idea of doing 12 weeks of challenges but I was going to start all 12 things at once I can't remember them all now but it was an insane amount of things so I decided I was going to start intermittent fasting and I was only going to eat in a four hour window a day I decided that I was going to I was no longer going to have any screen time I wasn't going to have any games or reading or anything on my phone. So I would put my screen time to essentially zero. I decided to not listen to music. And I want to talk about some of these later because some of them actually were amazing for me. But then some of them turned negative. And so I was also training for a half marathon. It was the first half marathon I ever ran. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do all of this too was for my wedding. And I wanted to get in like good shape, feel good, feel great. And the whole point was to just kind of document it and stop doing one thing at a time. So the other thing I did, I quit coffee. And that was one of the biggest mistakes I could have made because not only did I stop 
intermittent fasting, I also stopped having, I mean, not only did I extend my intermittent fasting time, I stopped having coffee, which is what always has helped me fast longer. And it instantly just put my body in, in a bad state, which I'll talk about those three things in a little bit. But so I'm kind of wanting to get into like great shape for all of these things. And I felt like because I said I was going to do it, even when I knew like this isn't right, I kept doing it and I did it for this like fake YouTube audience that didn't even know I was doing it. And so I had this like, oh, people, if I don't do it for seven days, then people will know. I hadn't told anyone that, that that's what I was doing. It was just this kind of false belief. And so that made me do it way longer than I should have. And it was only like five to seven days. I don't even remember. It, it was not very long. And one of the things I had even said at the beginning was, if any of these are negative, then I'll stop doing them because I don't want to do something that's negative. But just because I, I just felt like I had to for some reason. So, okay. And so I just want to lose a little bit extra weight before I started the race. Um, it was, it really wasn't that much. I just thought if I do this for a week and get right back into it, it'll be no problem. I wanted to stop my coffee addiction and I didn't want to have any beer or alcohol before the race. And so I just created this long list of things. So here's the three signs that I should have seen. Number one, I was in like from the get go, this state of, sorry if you can't hear me as well now, fan just turned on. I was in this state of extreme hunger, like from the get go. Day one, it's like as soon as I made the decision that I was gonna be fasting for four hours a day, I instantly like wanted food. So like I said, I normally won't even eat till noon or two and I inst like woke up hungry, just wanting food, and I pushed it, and I thought, oh, I just need to get through day one and it'll get better. It did not get better, it got worse. And so like by day five, it was, it was horrible. I mean, I was like just literally constantly thinking about food, and I should have stopped days before that when it, it clearly wasn't working, or even have just said, okay, it's okay, I can bring the coffee in, anything but what I was doing. It instantly put my body in this like state of fight or flight. And so that's my number one. If, if you've started a fast and you instantly feel like that, then maybe there's like a more emotional aspect of, of lacking that kind of needs to be healed first or maybe it needs to be done just in a little bit of a slower, more controlled manner. Because if you're feeling that way, then it's really not gonna be sustainable. So I've fasted for years. I never have that problem. I'm just not hungry. And so that's, that's my first warning. My second warning, and this started happening second, third, fourth day, is I started like gorging. And so if I was getting like 2,500 calories in my normal two meals, I probably started eating in my one meal like 3,000 calories. Like I started eating more than I was eating in my longer eating window. And that should have been my second like big warning, just just stop now, it's okay. Um, that, those two things in, in that like sense should have just been instant alarm bells, stop. My body was in a state of fight or flight. So the third one is for more if you're just consistently fasting. And so this has happened for me a lot. I will be just like fasting and I'll be good. And then all of the sudden, I will just kind of feel like I'm in a fight or flight. And this usually has to do with some other things in my life, like just like working a lot and working out, doing all of these things all at once, maybe emotional stress. And I'll just find for a few days, I'm kind of just in this fight or flight stress state. And my wife was actually the first one to point this out to me. And I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna do the counterintuitive thing for me and I'm gonna, eat breakfast and the more I did this and I got in this fight or flight state I found that like having that third meal really kicked me out of it and it just like relaxed me and so I don't know if this is a me thing personally where I just have that relationship with food that is slightly negative sometimes and if I feel like I'm lacking then it puts me there but just switching that one thing and most of the time I'm not in that fight or flight but I found that 
I'll stay in it and sometimes just eating breakfast can really alleviate a lot of my stress symptoms. And so I would definitely suggest that if you are a long-term intermittent faster that, you know, the reason fasting, one of the reasons fasting is good is it puts our body into a stress state. So just like the cold plunging or working out or all of these other things we do, we're putting our body into a stress state. And I think that if we have too much stimulus, we're working out, we're cold plunging, we're fasting, we're doing schoolwork and we're working and our you know um, emotional relationships, it may get to the point where the fasting is no longer a positive thing. And I think like with anything, doing everything all of the time is not good. Like, you know, if I cold plunged every day for 10 minutes, I don't think it would be a good thing for me. I usually only do a couple of minutes when I'm able to. And even then there's, there's breaks if I'm traveling and different things. And so I think it's good to not always, it's like you want to get your body to a point where it can recover again. And if while in the, in the state of fasting, you can't get back into that recovery state, then it's going to be a negative. And I think especially for your mind. So those are my three watch out fours negatives with intermittent fasting. I still fast. I feel amazing doing it. But when I start to get stressed a few days in a row, or if I'm hungry in the morning, like feeling I need food, I just listen to my body and I eat. And I've always done that in the past. That's why I don't eat till 12 or two sometimes because I'm just not hungry. And if I'm starting to like eat way too much food, then I know like, okay, something is wrong in the picture here. So there's my case study for intermittent fasting. Um, this is again, me personally, anything you want to look at scientifically, I'm not going to be your guy, but if you've had similar experiences than me, then maybe those will help. So, all right. Thanks for watching.